Well, as mentioned, the first system I'm going to cover is the line where white sets up with the Austrian attack. He goes knight c3, d6, and now f4. I must admit, I've played the modern for years, and I still find this possibly the most intimidating system to play against. White sets up a broad three-pawn center, and um, well, white can play this in, in two different ways. He can either play for a direct attack against the black king side, or he can use his center to cramp the black game. Black has to be accurate against this particular setup. Now, black can do many things. Um, in the old days of the modern, back in the 1960s and 70s, black was quite often setting up with the move c6. And the idea was that after knight f3, black would go bishop g4. Uh, the queen may come out to b6, and pressure will be brought to bear against d4 and b2. This doesn't have an especially good reputation these days, uh, this particular system, but I believe it's still uh, playable for black certainly at club level. However, it's not the system I'm going to recommend. When c6 became slightly unfashionable, black was often setting up with knight c6. Again, the idea of this move is to bombard the white center, and in particular to put pressure on the d4 square. So that, for instance, if white played knight f3, bishop g4 immediately puts um, slightly unpleasant pressure on the d4 pawn. When white learned that knight f3 wasn't a particularly good continuation, he then realised that bishop e3 was uh, was a much better move, delaying knight f3 for the time being. However, the best move of all, after knight c6, is bishop b5, and it's because of this move that I can't really recommend knight c6 to you. Modern defence connoisseur, Grandmaster Nigel Davis, who has been playing the modern defence for many years and written interesting books on the subject, thinks that bishop b5 amounts to nothing less than a refutation of um, knight c6. From my perspective, is black's position so bad after a6, bishop takes, pawn takes, bishop e3? Well, maybe not, but Davis believes that black is unpleasantly cramped in this position. The modern interpretation, one that's recommended by Tiger Hillop Pearson in his excellent modern defence book, starts with a6. The originator of this idea was, in fact, um, one of the great original modern defence practitioners, Alexander Kotov. And Kotov used this move to uh, to blow away many opponents, you know, uh, um, 40 or 50 years ago. And the idea, of course, of, after uh, knight f3 is to go b5 and then to try to gain counterplay with the help of move c5 a little later down the line. Well, once again, you know, a6 is playable, it certainly is, but um, the line I'm going to recommend to you on this DVD is none of those ideas. It's, in fact, the move e6. Little known, little used, and um, might throw your opponents into confusion. So what are the points of e6? Well, first and foremostly, I think e6 tries to take the sting out of pawn advances in the early middle game by white. For instance, when you play the Austrian attack, you're always looking to play e5, or perhaps you're always looking to play f5. One of those moves is going to create an attack for you. So the point of e6, firstly and foremost, is to put the brakes on the pawn advances. It looks rather passive for black to block in that bishop on c8. So what are black's intentions? Well, I think that bishop on c8 intends to go to b7 where the black sets up with a6 and b5, or simply b6 and bishop b7, that depends on what white's doing. But black generally is not going to leave that bishop on c8 for very long. Black's knights, well, they're probably going to go to e7 and d7. Kind of like a hippopotamus setup. Again, black is waiting to see what white does, how he commits his minor pieces, and then he's going to react accordingly. Just to show you how confusing this system can be uh, for the average player. I'm going to start with a couple of games uh, from, how can I put it, normal tournaments, not grandmaster tournaments. The idea of showing you these games, and they're by no means great, is to highlight how difficult it is to just blow black away in this position and how easily black can gain counterplay if he knows what he's doing. 
So the first of these games comes from the uh, Belgian Championship, which was played in Namur in 2009. And playing white is an average player, Kurt Van Wheeler. He's graded about 1900. Playing black, Walter de Raymaker. And he's graded 2200. So not bad players, but not grandmasters by any stretch of the imagination. And in this game, white played knight f3. We know that is the most common move. And of course, now that black can't put his bishop on uh, g4, it's probably the best move as well. For the time being, white doesn't quite know where he wants his bishops. Black, meanwhile, just plays knight e7. White goes bishop e3. And as soon as black sees a move like that, he's got to imagine that white is limbering up to castle on the queen side. The queen may come to d2, castles on the queen side, and then white gets on with the job. So this is why black immediately prepares a bit of counterplay on the queen side with a6. Now, of course, white could prevent black from playing b5 by going a4, but then casting on the queen side, of course, is a much less attractive prospect. So I imagine if white played a4, black would revert to the uh, b6 and bishop b7 plan. Instead, in this game, white plays bishop e2, and black sees no reason not to play b5. White goes queen d2, knight d7, and now black has to, white has to make a fundamental decision. Where shall he castle? Well, as black seems to have prepared a reception committee already on the queen side with a6 and b5, Van Wiel decides to cast on the king side. A sensible decision, but now black is getting counterplay after bishop b7. And already in this position, I imagine that the average player is starting to feel uncomfortable. Yes, white gains space when he pushes all those pawns up in the opening, but he doesn't do anything for the development of his minor pieces. And now I think perhaps Van Wiel is regretting putting that bishop on e2. Because the pawn on e4 is weakened. Black is almost certainly threatening b4 in this position. And white doesn't want to play e5, I think, immediately. I mean, a move like that doesn't really make a very good impression uh, on me in this particular position. For instance, black can go knight f5. That's one good move. Holes are appearing in white's position. And this is exactly what black wants. A premature advance of the white centre pawns. So, Van Wiel loses a tempo with bishop d3, and now black plays knight f6. Again, putting pressure on the e4 pawn. And this is an uncomfortable move for white, because not only does black threaten b4 in this position, he's also threatening knight g4, which takes away the very valuable dark square bishop from white. Anybody that plays Fianchello systems with black will know how important this bishop is. So always look out for the opportunity in the modern to get rid of this bishop because it makes your life a hell of a lot easier. It's much more difficult for white to give checkmate against the black king when he hasn't got a dark square bishop. So for instance the continuation of this game with white moving forward with e5 and black going knight g4 very much satisfied the rainmaker because he's going to get hold of white's dark square bishop. And after that it's much easier to defend his king. You're never going to get mated. It's just a normal game of chess after that. And... Uh, Black will be looking to break up white centre with the additional benefit of having a dark square bishop in his position. So white went knight d1, black castled, he can always get take this bishop. White went c3 and now black went rook c8. So black is looking forward to the day when he whips off this bishop on e3 and then gains some counterplay with c5. Which is absolutely thematic because once the dark square bishop has gone, black is looking to really break down those pawns in the centre on the dark squares. So seeing nothing better, white goes h3, knight takes e3, knight takes e3, and now black goes through with c5. This is another typical modern defence move. Yes, the centre's blocked, so the bishop on g7 is not going to exert a dominant role for quite some time to come. So what white is hoping for is to keep the centre blocked and then to sort of fashion some sort of kingside attack using his knights. C5 very much frustrates those ambitions of a kingside attack and I think black is putting far too much pressure on the centre here for white to ever entertain hopes of a winning kingside attack but yet this is exactly what Van Wheeler does he continues to lurch forward with G4 well this is the type of move any modern defence player um, will be delighted to see it's a complete vindication of black's elastic opening approach black is just waiting for a mistake like this. Because far from attacking the black king, all white's doing when he plays such a move 
is to expose his own king. It's a very naive way of playing the position. And Van Wiel immediately regrets this move. As Black reacts thematically by opening up the centre. D takes E5. F takes E5. Bishop takes F3. Rook takes F3. C takes D4. And hey presto, White's game has completely collapsed at a stroke. All the fault of G4. Just going back to G4, D takes E5. Well, I'm afraid that the move D takes E5 didn't help. Black would just simply take on F3 in this position and play C4. And the bishop is fatally pinned to the queen. Going back once more to C5, well, of course, White can do better than G4. But the fact is, Black is putting quite a bit of pressure on White's centre. And the bishop on G7 will soon start to play. So following the game once more, g4, takes, 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 c takes, c takes, queen takes, d4. And really this is now suddenly a completely hopeless position for white. This position is disintegrating and white loses pawn after pawn. Well there's no coming back from this so the rest of the game doesn't really require much commentary. Black is what, three pawns up for nothing. White doesn't really have any attack whatsoever. And now black moves in with accurate queen c1 check. King to g2, and now rook takes c2. A deflection, the queen is overloaded. The white queen, she can't simultaneously take the black rook and protect e3. So, not a great game, but a good way to start our investigation, and a good example of how black can dismantle premature pawn advances by white.